and welcome back to the Essex Allotment Farm. If you haven't watched any of my videos so far, I'm Alex and this is the beginnings of my commercial market garden. So I'm stood right up the end here and I'm excited to share with you all that work has begun on Block C. So um, I've started work on Block C this morning. As you can see, I've roped out some of the beds and some of the pathways. I've turned a couple of the pathways into the beds and then I'm starting to put a big thick layer of compost on the top of some of the beds. So I'm going to show you a little that in a little bit more detail. Right, it's time for a break. I've just laid down the first two paths or finish off the first two paths and put all the compost on the new bed. It's ready for some soil amendments and to be covered for the winter. But before I do that, I'm gonna talk you through the process very quickly and why I'm, why I'm doing it like this. The land I've inherited has been sort of heavily plowed. It's got uh, quite a bit of annual weed pressure. So I'm using the no digger approach but I'm not uh, laying cardboard because the weeds are only annual and I've got no real perennial issues like grasses and bits like that so all I'm doing is turn and you can see by this path here that I haven't um, sorry this bed here that I haven't done yet I've turned the top layer of the path into the bed so that the paths are a little bit uh, shallower than the beds to help with water runoff um, and then I've covered the paths in wood chip and I shall cover this bed in a thick layer of compost like I've done here. The soil that I've sort of inherited is pretty dead, pretty waterlogged, very, very heavy and clayey. So um, the important thing is that I'm getting loads of organic matter into the beds. Hence the reason I haven't been too fussy about the bulk compost. It's very woody. It's got quite a few wood pieces in it. It's quite thick. Uh, you wouldn't sow seeds in it necessarily. However, it was reasonably priced in bulk and um, it'll do a great job of blocking out the right light and suppressing those weeds underneath. Uh, what I'll do with the for nutrients is add some soil organic soil conditioner. I've been gifted some that's uh, from natural grower. And um, yeah, so I'll add that as a mulch on top and then I will cover of these beds using tarpaulin, um, like the one in, ones in the distance over there, over winter. The, uh, compost and the nutritional um, soil conditioner will continue to break down under the tarpaulin and I should have much better conditioned beds to plant in in the spring. So I'm using wood chip for my paths and obviously a huge part of um, starting a market garden, a lot of monteering, things like that is, the, is budgeting, especially when you're talking about a business. Um, I've got a bit of capital to help me pay for the initial startup, but the more you can get a low cost or for free, obviously it helps and that goes for a lot of monteering, back garden growing and commercial market gardening. And what I did was reached, literally cold called a few um, 
sort of uh, tree surgeons and wood chippers that are local to my area and said I could take bulk loads off of them. And as you've just saw by the video, this is the third load that this particular wood chipper or tree surgeon uh, company has dropped off for me, completely free of charge. Um, I've taken a few um, logs off them, which helps them out. Um, I won't do that every time, but um, it's really good because A, it's free for me. It helps them out. They'd usually have to pay to get rid of it. It's a local company uh, run by a family. So it's really good. And this stuff eventually, will be uh, in my paths breaking down and adding carbon to the soil. Right, I've just jumped in the shed because that noise was just getting worse and worse. I've locked myself in here to try and block out some of the background noise. But anyway, what I was saying is, um, I'm aware that obviously when you add large amounts of wood chip or carbon based uh, materials or brown materials, when you're talking about compost in into um, your soil or an area of your farm or allotment, um, it uses up a lot of the nitrogen in the soil to help break that down. Obviously nitrogen is something that your plants need a lot of to grow, so you just have to be really careful with that. Here, my ground is so compacted, so um, dense and heavy um, and clayey that um, this amount of wood chip, especially in the paths as it breaks down, will only benefit um, the ground here. Effectively, the soil here is screaming out for organic matter and this sort of slow breakdown of the paths um, will aid that composition of the soil just brilliantly. And as long as I'm adding lots of nutrients into the actual beds, um, heavy nitrogen uh, based nutrients like the soil conditioner that I've been using and the compost that um, I'm using, then the two should balance each other off and it shouldn't have a negative effect on my sort of area. You can see I've got the remains of a pile over there and obviously this is where the blocks are and what's really frustrating is because the field is so wet um, the truck couldn't come in onto the field but I didn't want to turn him away when he's doing me a favour and giving me for free so I've got a little bit of um, lugging about to do but I might go and try and um, butter up my landlord um, who runs an arable farm and ask him if he can get his tractor out and move it all over for me. You never know. Okay, so why I'm in the shed just filming a couple of bits, I thought I'd just quickly show you the peas that we planted in last week's vlog um, and show you how they've sprouted already. I'm going to talk a little bit about what fruit I plan to have on the uh, farm in the 2021 uh, season and what I'm going to use it for and the reason I want to talk about it a little bit is now is a brilliant time of year to be planting uh, bare root stock so a lot of fruit um, trees and bushes and plants come as bare root stock and now is a great time of year to put them in um, specifically this season I'll talk about strawberries. So this week I have ordered my first um, big batch of strawberries. Now before I get into it, first of all I should say thanks to the guys on Instagram. Loads of people through the post sent me loads of strawberry runners and I got you know maybe 150 strawberry runners from various different people around the country. I've managed to um, grow on as many of those as I can, um, but obviously I haven't got the varieties and types of those um, and I need a hell of a lot more. So thank you for sending me those and they'll definitely be part of the farm. Um, what I'm also uh, doing or have done is ordered uh, a load more strawberry bare root stock to go in in the next couple of weeks. When it comes to fruit and bare root stock, I'm not an expert on the allotment. Um, if you follow my journey from back from the allotment days, you'll know that I had some rhubarb and some soft fruit on there like your berries and, and bits like that but I'm going to go big with strawberries this year. And that is because A, I've found a wholesaler that is ridiculously good prices, which I'll talk about in a minute. And also uh, the value of a strawberry crop is, is huge. The markup on it is huge, especially considering they're a perennial plant, um, they give off their own runners. So with this one initial outlay uh, of money to buy these plants, um, you can keep reproducing and reproducing plants 
um, year on year on year. Um, and that becomes a little side thing at my market gardens. I can either replace my plants with the runners um, after every couple of years, or I can sell the runners in pots, uh, farmers markets and bits like that. Um, but most importantly, obviously the strawberry crop is a high value crop, berries and um, strawberries in particular are at the high end of um, the sort of like scale when it comes to markup. So they're a really good crop to have. I'll introduce them and include them in some of my vegetable boxes as like a bit of a bonus and sell them at the farmer's markets. So I have ordered some bare root strawberry stock um, from a wholesale company and I'll put them in the link below. It's not affiliated or anything. It's just in case anyone wants to buy in bulk, but I've ordered a thousand um, strawberry rootstock plants and it's a little bit of a, the first time it's, it was quite amusing actually it's a little bit of the first time that I've gone through that process you know for years and years and years I've gone to a garden center and I might pick up you know maybe 10 strawberry plants if I'm feel if they're on a deal or you know I'm, I'm feeling a little bit adventurous that week or I've got a bit of spare cash in my pocket but to spend um, a couple of hundred quid on a thousand strawberry plants is uh it's like quite a big investment and the first time that i've bought plants in that kind of bulk even with the seeds at the moment i've not got to the stage where i'm ordering loads and loads and loads of bulk seeds so it's a bit of a milestone because it's that first big purchase that first big investment when it comes to the actual plant and the stock that i'll be selling um i've ordered cambridge favorite uh, which is a really trusty variety um, I have grown it before and I sort of um, can relate to the points it says in the description. So it's really hardy, um, it'll grow anywhere, it's a relatively heavy cropper, and it kind of looks after itself. Um, and the reason, you know, I'm going to be, the reason I've gone for that type as opposed to something that's like a miraculous flavour but might need a little bit more attention is because I'm just going to be so busy. I'm going to be so busy next season. I'm still going to be learning. Um, uh, it's going to be my first season. And, you know, I just want to get some strawberries in the ground this side of Christmas so it's out the way and um, not have to worry about them too much. And hopefully by getting a hardy variety or a trusty local variety um, that'll aid me in that sort of you know journey of growing strawberries um, and and hopefully i won't have to do too much with them as far as where they're going to go on the farm i have talked to you a couple of times about my block layout and how i've done it with 10 sort of what i call annual beds or the 10 main beds of each block but there's a two meter bed at the end of every block that i'll be using for perennial plants in the first three blocks it will be strawberries so uh, that's what you can see in the video that you've just seen and um I'll be burning holes through the weed membrane and planting the strawberries through weed membrane again to aid that whole process of looking at making looking after them easy and um, not too much weeding, not too much work. Hopefully those strawberries will just plough along with a bit of pruning and a bit of you know watering and looking after and uh, I won't have to do too much with them and I'll get a nice sort of summer strawberry harvest from them in the first season and then we'll see what we do with the runners and bits as the seasons go on. Obviously in the future I do want to mix up the varieties and like I said it will be really interesting to see what comes of this sort of 150 mystery strawberry runners that have been sent by various different people um, around the country which would be great but if you have got a absolute favourite strawberry variety let me know um, and then I can do a bit of research around it and it might be something that I add into uh, the strawberry patch in the future. So yeah, there we are at this stage. That's all I've got to say on strawberries and uh, bare root stock. I think in the future, I'll be introducing some more soft berries like currants and uh, raspberries, blackberries and stuff like that, but um, probably not this season. Right, let's jump out into the block and I'll give you a quick spin round and a quick update of how things are growing on.
So you can see that the uh, broad beans have sprouted up that we planted a couple of weeks ago and they're coming on really nicely. Um, the onions sets that we planted are looking pretty good and uh, the garlic has started to sprout up and I haven't necessarily had too many issues with that. The uh, leaf mulch has started to sort of incorporate itself into the soil at very early stages. So that's good news. Um, I've focused and switched all my attention to the crops for next year now. I have still got um, some bits in the ground like you saw, some lettuce, some beetroot, some of my trial crops, the kale under cover, and they were purely designed, as I've said numerous times before, to just trial and see what the ground's like and see if we can get stuff to grow here. Um, and so my attention's moving away from those crops that aren't gonna really be fit for sale. Um, I'll probably just donate them or eat them myself. Um, and focusing on next year and next year's crops. What you might have seen in some of those clips is some of the weed pressure that's just started to come through. Um, I am sort of next to this huge great big field that's obviously quite got quite a lot of weeds in it, quite a lot of seeds and it's that time of year where they've all seeded and it's blowing across um, the blocks. So it's something I'm going to have to think about in the future and a few of these have started to germinate on the surface but they're annual weeds and it's not a massive issue it's something that you're always going to have to deal with however because of that reason I haven't gone with a full block of field beans like I said because although field beans are a green manure and they're great to add in uh, nutrients into the soil they uh, are not particularly good as a ground cover and stopping that germination of weed seeds happening. So I've gone with three beds of field beans and I've decided to cover four of the beds in block B. Now these beds are the ones that have got sort of like or the beginnings of the most weed pressure because they're right next to here so a little bit of grass maybe creeping in and stuff like that. So I've covered those with my plastic that I cut right at the beginning in vlog one and I've used that to suppress the weeds over winter and we'll just let that do its thing under the cover. As far as the weeds in the actual beds that stuff's planted, obviously mulching is gonna help that. You could see in the garlic bed that there was hardly any weed pressure, whereas perhaps in the onions and bits like that. So I might have to think about maybe getting in some straw or hay and adding some mulch. Um, but at the end of the day, you're never gonna get away with not having to weed at all. So I'm just gonna have to get the hoe out and do a good job over the winter at keeping those as tidy and as weed free as possible. That is it for the vlog this week week 16 thanks so much for watching as always like and share and subscribe and do all those bits to help my channel grow and um, i look forward to seeing you again next week